All right, video two. Over here we have a whole bunch of little ones that Kira raised. She so don't know when to stop. So if you hear the chirping in the background, there you go. This is video two on when you need to, or how you need to put your solar arrays together at the cheapest possible cost. Now, uh, the solar dealers sell little Z clips for like $15 for one panel mounting a gear. Eh, pretty ridiculous. So you're gonna spend about 80, 90 bucks to do what I'm gonna do for about 30. Now, what I'm gonna do is also gonna give me my angle and everything else, which you cannot do with what the solar companies supply. You either mount them flat or you're screwed. Mine breathe, get more air, they're better off. So here we are in video two here, and I'm going to show you what we're working with. Any of the materials, all these panels, the charge controllers, everything else, all the wiring, all these parts sitting out here. Look below the video, I'll put everything down there. Um, your average uh, rescue level solar, so if you want rescue level solar, would be six of these panels times two, so 12, two 50 amp controllers, uh, at minimum of six 130 amp hour deep cycle golf cart style batteries, and a 2500 to 3000 watt inverter. That will hold your home over in most emergencies. So let's look at how we put this together. This is the second half of this and materials used. Let's get out here. I have a trailer sitting out here that I'm working on the frame of. Kind of cool, huh? Um, here's how it went together. There's your end caps down here. You'll see the plates went over those holes you see in that other video. It structurally gives it more strength. Every 16 inches, stainless steel screws going through both layers of the metal every time. And this stuff here is a 22 gauge. Um, I think either 20 or 22 gauge. I'm not 100%. And then, of course, the hat metal on the bottom. So you have this piece that will go on the roof for the lower half of your solar panel. And this piece for the upper half of your solar panel along with those clips. And this is what it looks like finished. It weighs about 24 pounds complete. And it will support a load of about 600 pounds total. We're only putting um, roughly about 210 on it. So there you go there. And the fact that it is going to be every 9 inches going to be mounted to the roof. And I have 26 gauge roof. But if you have a shingle roof, you can do however you want. Just make sure that your shingle protrudes about this far past the bottom of your shingle to the next layer. So that you can have what's called weep out frost control. So you don't have feedback and or flow back of frost and you're good. Now, that is the first one. Let's get in here and I'm going to show you how we made the end caps. Here is one of my little end caps. It's just a piece of sheet metal. 24 gauge, comes from just regular roll stuff you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. Here's pre-cuts that I made. And for your end caps, we're just going to center it up on a piece of 2 by. You can use 2 by 6 or 4, whatever. Centered. And then I'm just going to form it down with my hands, like that. And you just keep rolling it down like that over the top. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to keep out large insect colonies or blowing rain and stuff. And of course you'll caulk that when you put it in. So we have it bent like that. And then we're just gonna roll that down. I've been working with sheet metal a lot, so. And I will just work this down. If you don't have strong hands, you might wanna use a little bender of some kind. And this ends up being your end cap. So. Now I will have end caps for both sides and you can just work it and manipulate it. What you'll be doing is you'll be putting it on and it will shoot past to where it attaches also to this. And these will attach by shooting through the bottom into double studs. And you'll see here when these studs are put together, there's that space right here. So you need to make sure when you shoot your screws in, you take your time. Don't rush it so that you don't bend that inward. And then, of course, this piece will be trimmed and have a tab that folds over. And I'll show you that as we move along. All right, guys, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the screws and we're going to attach the hat metal to the 2x6 metal studs. And I'll show you how that process works. It's not too complicated. So, as you can see here, the metal is in two pieces. 
and we're just going to insert one in the other, let it overlap here and over here. And then I'm going to stand it up. And placing the track on top. Like so. And then using three quarter inch self tappers. You want to make sure this is well centered and held together. And then just hold this together here. Takes two. I got Daniel down there on the other end here. Now, since these are two pieces with a slight gap, your screw might want to push away so you'll back off and hit it again. Then snug it up. So we'll continue about every 16 inches and doubles on the ends adding these stainless steel screws. And if you want, I'll put a link to where you get these. These are the best because you see the finer, little slightly finer threads, meaning that they hold a lot better. Instead of about 44 pounds, they'll hold 70 pounds of load resistance. All right, so let me get all of this here put together and we're going to get them up on the roof. I'm the trucks and cars going by living near a highway. I have my uh, old panels up here. I have more of them over here. And um, what I'm working with here is I'm working with laying down my hat metal. And I've made me a mark 42 inches from the end of the roof because it's nearly almost 20 foot fall to the ground. So you want to have you some workspace out here to where you're not going to be flipping off your roof or you don't have to work from a ladder the whole time. This is the mark here where this hat metal will go. And what I'm going to be using is just some pretty simple Rust-Oleum rubberized wet patch. It works pretty good. Um, it doesn't have any problems. And I'm going to put a bead down on each one of these ridges on the metal roof. And then you can see how I've got my marks set up. Let me see it slid forward there. Have I, how I have them set so then I'll drop my hat metal down over the top of that and then we will just be using standard one inch roofing screws to go into this now this is 26 gauge metal it's going to hold these very well and that is the same setup that you have over here so you can see what I've done here Okay, so I've got basically two washers on the lead wind edge, and then I used a bead of caulk silicon down at the bottom of it. And the reason I did that is to keep ice water from getting behind it. And it also is a uh, pretty good way of sticking the panel down. Now over here, because this is up on my ridge, we used a metal back flash, but you can see it's the same design. These have been up here since I think 2011 or something. And they work perfect. So, and I have, let me get over here where we won't have a problem here. I have numerous turbines up here. So they get lots of power. And you can look, look in uh, other videos on my channel if you want to interested in solar and wind. Okay. So let me go ahead and get this one tacked down. And then the next one goes 32 inches to center. That will be this piece right up here. We'll go 32 inches to center right above that one, okay? And now with the bottom rail down, we've placed the top rail. And Daniel is hitting each one of these screws the, uh, at the upper side. Now we're not gonna worry about it down here at the bottom. And I wanna show you what's gonna make life a lot easier and I bet you there's going to be lots of people want to know where I got that thing. I will put a link for it. Look below for the links to the solar panels and chargers and all that material list. And I will put this because this makes a hell of a difference when you're doing this kind of roof work. And it locks on to a impact and it's just wonderful to have. So there's the bottom rail down and on the top end, once again, he's went ahead and dabbed that. And I should have mentioned that earlier. On the top.
top side because your solar panels are gonna your solar panels are gonna sit right here in this groove. Use the pen head and then do like he just did there. Okay, now you can see they're down and we are up here setting up for the wires. Now the wires, there is a grommet and just using a one inch stepper bit, we go through the roof. You can see about a two by four width there. There's the purlings that run across for my roof to be screwed down to. And I just went, there's the stud and then boom. So that just misses it where my wires can shoot back to my controllers. And on top of that, this will be underneath the solar panel as far as protection. Probably about a two inch coverage past the solar panel. And we'll pull the wires up, we'll stick them through this, and then we will secure this down. And they are made to shape and just use regular roofing screws. And make sure you put plenty in. Try not to put too many of them right in the seam itself. And use plenty of the the uh, rubberized sealant on both sides here and you won't have no problems all right we're going to work on it tonight in the dark we will put lights we have lights up here so we will put lights on the turbines and other places to light the place up so that we don't mess with solar panels i prefer to do solar panels at night i build racks during the day install the panels in the evening that way there's no chance of damaging one with an electrical arc or anything but there we go now those are these panels if you're curious they are on a higher level here because these panels are 125 watt older kia sira or sharp no I think these are sharp i believe or lg lj's or something whatever uh lg panels so these have been up here a long time but these here are much longer those panels are 40 inches these are i think 65 so because of making up for the height otherwise it would only required just that so all right just like this one up here has you see that okay all right guys back up here and we have our wire through seals done it looks a little bit rough but it's just some silicone on it um, and that is a regular joint terminal connector and the uh, boot is on the roof and that does look a little rough but silicone that that's made out of is real tacky a uh, leveling style and it'll settle down and then a washer used to hold the wires on uh, like i said all of this from this point right here see that mark up will be out of the weather here's the panels on their way up a couple of them sitting there now and three more to bring up we'll have all 10 up here and we'll show you the next step here in just a few seconds there you go focus in there I had to wait till dark to get up here to put these panels in and they are on their rack so if you want to see what that looks like out here on the wind edge where there'd be wind pushing against it i put a little doubling on it out here in the front we'll use a fender washer and a little bit of silicone underneath it to keep that washer from ever spinning. There's two of them on every panel. Believe me, it holds fine. And then under here, you'll see that there's the single. And then over here, the double. All right, and we're about to show you how that goes together. And there's all the wiring going out that way. Just like that. And these, these hangers, they make them... To where there's a right and a left so be sure when you get yours that you have right and left or there are some that are just the universals too see down here on this end we put a doubling on it and the same style construction so i got this one ready and we're going to show you exactly how this goes together down here Now, me taking the, the drill, I've got a panel set up over here. And I set that panel up by getting my height correct based on the seams. You see the little seams right there? And you can see where the screw is going in. So my first screw on the inside goes in that seam. And you want to make sure you stay below 
this line right here so that you don't get into the sealant that's inside that panel. Otherwise, it'll look like that. You see where the screws are coming through? They miss everything that way. Now, in this one's case, this would be the one used over here, and this would be the one used over here. And what we do is we go ahead and prop the panel and make the panel for both ends. So show them the other end over there, Daniel. And then I'll slide this whole panel over, and you watch down here, and it doesn't matter which one, whichever one looks like it's easiest to, to go on, and then just make sure that your panel is nice and squared to the bottom down there. You see that? And you just make sure it's nice and squared. So you'll be able to slide it right into place, just like this. And you can see under there how that's going together. And now, the two panels will overlap and touch where those touch together just down right here. So let me show you how that looks like on these things. So when they go together, they will touch right like, right like that where it hits. And when it does, that's when you just put your screws in and you're good to go. Now, the way I do it is I'll put one against the pulling panel there, or the second panel. Make sure it's nice and squared, no tension. And shoot it in, get the outer one. And then I'll grab the inside one like this. And you can see that gauge that metal, this thing's pulling up real tight. And then I'll put through there like that. And we have hit all surfaces. And penetrated this one, penetrated that one on the way through, and you've got five screws holding each one of these in. And two screws on this each time, with each screw with a 165 pounds braking capacity. So be sure if you look down at the bottom of the video, I put down the exact ones that we use. They're a lot stronger, and they're self-tappers. It makes, it makes all this really easy. Now, we're going to finish this up, and you'll see it in an update video real soon. But as it sits, we did a very simple install. I've got two and a half inches of coverage on each end of each panel set. And that way it gives me plenty of room to work with. And they sell those studs in 12 foot lengths. And they sell that hat metal in 12 foot lengths. And as you can tell, it all went together perfect. All right, guys. There you go. We're going to wrap this up. Get the hell in the house. Have supper. Oh, yeah. And if you was wondering, did he hook up the controllers? Yeah. Yeah, I hooked them up. A lot of wire. <laughs>